Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about image formation and specifically image formation involving lenses. We will look at mirrors coming up in another lecture, but let's go ahead and start out looking at lenses and how we can form images with them. Now the first thing before we get started is that I want to talk about what we call dispersion. Dispersion is the spreading of white light into its full spectrum of wavelengths. So we're familiar with this and it is seen in rainbows. For example, as we see here, uh, the image of the rainbow with all the colors shining in a nice arc going across the sky. Now this is caused by refraction is what does this it causes dispersion in something like a rainbow and that is uh, because the index of refraction remember we talked about that that was n that was the ratio of the speed of light to the velocity of light within that substance depends on the wavelength so we looked at it in general but in reality it also depends on wavelength and that it will be different for red light than for blue light so we can look a little bit here and see what we mean by the spreading of the light. And what we get is that when you send light through a prism, if you have just a single wavelength, it is bet bent as it enters the prism, travels through, and then bent again when it comes out. Now we're looking at just one wavelength here. However, because the index of refraction depends on the wavelength, when the white when white light comes in, which is made up of many colors, it will be bent differently. Shorter wavelengths like the violet will be bent more and come out a little further down. And longer wavelengths, say the red, are bent a little bit less and come out up here. So sending white light into a a prism because of dispersion will actually spread out the light into the colors of the rainbow. And we can see a little bit more about how this works. If we look at what's happening when we form a rainbow is that this is happening inside a water droplet. Now not just a single water droplet but a whole bunch of them and that's why we often see this after a rainstorm because you have all sorts of water droplets still hanging in the atmosphere. And when sunlight hits them, the water droplet then behaves much like a prism. And light enters it and is split up, reflects off the back side here, comes down and splits again and is bent again. So we've actually got two bendings once when it enters and once when it exits here. And that spreads out the light into the colors of the rainbow from red through violet. And this a bunch of these will actually give us a rainbow as we see here in another image and we can see the rainbow from all of these different raindrops again not just one or two but many millions of them within the atmosphere and then we see from the sunlight all coming in parallel reflects off of those and gives us the light where in this case from the upper one we may be seeing the red color that reaches our eyes whereas the violet is too far up above us whereas this lower one the violet reaches our eyes and the red is too far below. So overall that will give us a rainbow going from violet through red here. And then you can actually see a secondary rainbow here and note that it's flipped again because it involves more uh, bending within the uh, raindrop and you go this one from red to violet. You can see it very faintly there that it actually switches from red through violet. Now we want to look then now let's go ahead and look a little bit about lenses. So what we have are there are two different types of lenses that we want to look at. And the first here is what we call a convex lens. So a convex lens is a converging lens and that's what's pictured here where the sides bow out from the center. And in this case the rays that are coming in parallel one two and three here are bent towards the axis. So they will meet together at the focal point off in the distance. And the focal point is what defines the lens. The focal point and the focal length is the distance from the center of the lens to the focal point. That's what we call the focal length. 
So that is described here. So the focal length, the distance between the center of the lens and the focal point. The focal point is the point where those two rays cross or three rays or 10 rays if you had more and more going in. Usually we just look at several rays to get an idea of what is happening there. And we can also look at another type of lens which is called a concave lens and a concave lens is bowed in towards the center and in this case it is a diverging lens that the rays are spreading out so ray one two and three just as we had before but in this case ray three bends away down towards the bottom ray one bends up towards the top they don't meet on the right side of the lens however you can imagine tracing them back to a focal point that they will meet on the on the near side of the lens here so that is the focal point of this lens and it, again the focal length is designed to find exactly the same as the distance between the center of the lens and the focal point now the power of a lens is given by the inverse of its focal length. So if you determine the focal length of a lens, then that gives you the power and they are inversely related. So a much larger focal length gives you a lower power and a much smaller focal length gives you a much higher power. And we can actually go ahead and do an example of that. And what we want to look at is that we have a magnifying glass that is able to concentrate sunlight to a small spot eight centimeters away from the lens. So this is our distance that we are looking at and we want to find what are the focal length and the power. Well what we know we've put our distance up there and that is exactly the focal length. So that just transfers right down to the focal length because that is the distance it takes all of those distant light rays to converge together. So when you get it concentrated to as small a spot as you can do that is actually giving you the focal length and in this case that would be eight centimeters and don't forget we want to convert that into meters so it would be 0 0.08 meters. Now if we want to find the power of the lens remember that the power is given by 1 over the focal length or 1 over 0 0.08 meters. And if we do that we find that the power is 12.5 meters to the minus 1 power which is defined to be a diopter 12.5 D where the diopter is the measure of optical power. So you can imagine if we had a much smaller focal length, then this power would be much larger. If we had a larger focal length, then the power would be much smaller. Now, in order to understand how images are formed, we have to go through the concept of ray tracing. And we also have to define what we mean by a thin lens. So first of all, what is a thin lens? A thin lens is a lens that is thin enough that we don't get dispersion. Normally with any lens dispersion will occur and it will be more depending on the thickness of the lens and that will be this member dispersion that is the spreading out of light that gives us the colors of the rainbow. So we want a lens that the dispersion effectively doesn't occur or very minimal amount occurs and the thinner the lens the less likely that is and that we want a ray through the center to be undeviated. So here with a thicker lens there will be some slight deviation for a ray going through the center of the lens whether it be a uh, convex lens or a concave lens you will have some slight deviation. The thinner the lens and in an ideal case of a super thin lens they would be undeviated and we use that to under to do ray tracing to understand image formation. Now using a thin lens we can then come up with the rules for ray tracing and there are several here that we look at first of all is that a ray entering a converging lens parallel to its axis passes through the focal point. So if it enters parallel here or here or even here in the middle it will always pass through the focal point. So you know that this lens is going to pass through the focal point and you can connect these to find out where that focal point would be. A ray entering a diverging lens on the other hand will 
it will uh, parallel to its axis will seem to come from the focal point. Remember it is diverging. But if you trace them back that will go back to the focal point. So those are the first two rules of ray tracing. The first one applies to converging lenses or uh, convex lenses. The other applies to concave lenses or diverging lenses. Now in this case number three applies to either lens and this is one of our thin lens approximations which says that a ray passing through the center of either lens does not change its direction. So note that the ray going straight through the center here goes straight through and continues on and the same thing here this ray just continues on undeviated. So if something is going straight through the center of the lens it does not change position. Now that one applies again for either converging or diverging it does not matter in this case. The last rule tells us that uh, which is two parts again one for converging and one for diverging tells us that a converging lens a ray entering a converging lens through its focal point exits parallel to the axis. So this is just the opposite if you looked at this the other way around if you had a lens a ray going through the focal point it is going to come out parallel so you can kind of invert these rays and these give us various ways to be able to build up the example images that we will see. And the same thing if we're looking at a diverging lens if it's heading by heading towards the po the focal point will on the opposite side exit parallel to the axis. So again all we're doing is inverting this here so that a ray coming in this direction will then end up because it's coming to, uh, heading towards the focal point will then end up parallel to the axis. So these all together will allow us to draw various images and learn how images are formed in different lenses. So when we look at these uh, if we use the rules for thin lenses we are looking at rays and here we look at three rays. So remember that a ray parallel to a converging lens we have here will then exit and go through the focal point. So that is one ray. The second ray second rule says that anything going through the center is undeviated. So that will go straight through and our third said that a ray going through the focal point will emerge heading parallel to the axis. Now if we put all three of these together this shows us where the image will be. Here is our object here and our image is on the other side has some height some distance from the lens. Note that it will not be at the focal point because the object was not near the focal point it will be at some distance from the focal point that we can then determine. And in fact that is the distance determined here. If the object is at some distance the image will be at a different distance. But if we put all three of these together on one image we can then see where the top of that object will be. So we don't need to trace every piece of the object to figure out the image. Generally what we can do is just trace these three main rays and that will show us the top of the image the top of the object is here and the top of the image is down here. Now in this case when we're looking at a, a converging lens then what we see is that we get a real image the light rays cross there. So we're actually seeing those light rays cross there and this is what we call a real image and that's the kind of thing that could be projected for example onto a screen. So we look at these rays we take where the top of the in this case person's head is and we can find out where the image of that head is and it just does invert. Please note that the lens does invert the image and flips it upside down in this case. Now we can also look at the next example which is for a diverging lens and for a diverging lens we have the same three rules three rules that we look at again one going through the center is undeviated and one going parallel to the axis is diverged so that it goes back through the focal point and if you remember the third one would be that the lens going through the focal point that appears to come from the focal point will go back out parallel. Well in this case we only need the two we will define exactly where that image is where those two intersect and we can see in this case we have our image is on the same side of the 
lens as the object that was different from the uh, converging lens that we looked at previously. And this is an example of a virtual image. And what that means is the rays don't actually cross. The rays are heading off this direction. The rays are heading off here and diverging away from each other. So we trace them back and they show where they would meet. But this is actually a virtual image that could not be projected onto a screen as an example. So that shows a little bit about how we can use ray tracing and those three rules for thin lenses to be able to figure out where the image will end up being. So let's go ahead and finish up this as we do with our summary. And what we've looked at this time, the first thing we talked about was dispersion. And we looked at that with rainbows and the spreading of light into its component wavelengths. And we talked about lenses and said that there could be two different types. We talked about converging or convex lenses and diverging or concave lenses. And we looked at the thin lens, the idea of a thin lens, which allows the light to bend only once and allows us to use the ray tracing rules to allow for uh, figure out image formation. And if you recall, a thin lens was one where a what was thin enough that there was no dispersion and that a light ray passing through the center was undeviated. So using that allowed us to get the rules for thin lenses and allowed us to do the ray tracing. So that concludes this lecture on image formation in lenses. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.